Hey guys, what's up? It's Jamie. Today we're going to be learning about the Angular Material tree, and it's going to look something like this. Now, first off, if you haven't seen my video on Angular Material Basics, be sure to check that out, and this will make more sense. Um, other than that, uh, the docs are a little confusing on this one because they give these simple examples, but if you try them, they don't work like this. And in fact, there are examples that do work, like this one, they're kind of long and confusing. So what I've done is I've actually made my own custom example, um, which is very minimal, and it should help explain all this stuff to you guys, okay? Um, so first off, there are two different kinds of trees. There's a flat tree, and then there is a nested tree. Um, now they're actually pretty similar, like they can both have indented items um, or like nested items, but the flat tree renders them all um, as siblings in the DOM and the nested tree actually nests the items within the DOM as well. So um, what we're going to be looking at is actually the nested tree. Um, because I figure that's probably what more of you guys want because um, styles applied to parent elements will apply to child elements. Um, <clears throat> but they're pretty similar, so um, if you understand the nested tree, you'll probably understand the uh, flat tree. So without further ado, we're going to be opening the code that I've written, my example, and I'll be explaining it piece by piece. Okay, so first off, I have the browser animations module, so you get um, nice animations for things like buttons and whatnot. Um, next up, I've imported the um, mat tree module, the mat icon module, and the button module. Okay, so those are all included here and up here. So make sure you have those, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, and then also so that our icons work, I've imported this link to um, the fonts for Angular Material in the index head tag. Now in the HTML file, um, what we have going on here is a tree, so a mat tree, um, and it actually takes quite a lot of configuration for this thing to work, but I'll try and explain it piece by piece. So first thing you need is a data source, um, and this is provided in our TypeScript. Okay, so inside of our TypeScript we have that nested data source which we were talking about. And this is of type mat tree nested data source, which is imported from Angular Material Tree. Okay, so that's just a nested data source data structure for us to use. And then all we do is we tell it uh, what type is our nodes, our tree nodes, what type are they? And so for that, I've made this little file node class up here, which a tree node has children and a file name and a type. So this is sort of like a file system um, tree that we're building here. Okay, so we have a nested data source of type file node. <coughs> okay, and when we go to the constructor, so when this tree is made, um, it says assign that data source to be a new nested uh, data source. So that'll just initialize it Okay, and next we tie the nested data source to another data object which we have, which is the actual data. So like, that's this right here. This is the actual data. Um, so this data change object is a subject, which if you're not familiar, that's just an object which you can um, subscribe to changes from. So in our case, um, that's a subject of type file node array. Okay, so that's just initialized up here. And then <clears throat> on line 28, I say um, call next on the data change object. So that means uh, make a change to the data change object. And that's just to initialize it. So test is a folder, test3 is a file, and then test2 is another file. So in fact, maybe I should rename this uh, test1 to folder. And then all the other tests are just files with an um, extension, okay? So now we have our data source. So again, that's set right here. So the tree has its data. And then the next thing is the tree control. 
um, which is tied to this nested tree control object in our TypeScript. So that's right here. Um, again, that's just imported from Angular for us. So this is from Angular CDK tree. Um, and then what this tree control object does is it controls like expanding and uh, collapsing of nodes in the tree. So when you make a new nested tree control object, you need to tell it what type the node is uh, for the tree and also how to know how many children this node has. So in our case, that's this get children uh, method, which I've declared here. And then that just returns node.children um, in the form of an observable. So that means that the caller can listen to changes uh, of whether or not this node has children. All right, so that's it for our nested tree control object. So again, we pass that here, which we need to control the toggling of the tree elements. And then next, I just give this object a class called example tree. Um, <clears throat> we give it some basic styling in here. So here I give the example tree UL and li tags some styling to make it look better. Back in the HTML file, um, there are two nodes which need to be defined. So one is a mat tree node, the other is a mat nested tree node. So for any given node, uh, only one of these is going to be rendered. Um, so the way that that's configured is you set this when attribute. So you say um, when has nested child, then it's the nested tree node. Um, otherwise, it's going to pick this mat tree node. Okay, now the difference between mat tree node and mat nested tree node is um, this first one does not need a mat tree node toggle because the second one is like a folder and this is like a file. So you can see that this says node.filename and then colon node.type. So that would be like test.exe. And it has a button here just for spacing to make sure it's spaced the same as things that do have a button. Um, so it just has a mat icon button, which is set to disabled and it doesn't have anything inside of it. Okay, now for the nested tree node, um, which is the one which has children, um, that is displayed when has nested child is true. And that is just a function within uh, our TypeScript. So has nested child is, and then that takes as a parameter um, the node, which we would like to know if it has a nested child. And then for now, that just returns um, not node data dot type. So that'll be true like for this first one, because the type is the empty string, which evaluates to false. So not false is true, and the first one has nested children, which it does because it's a folder. Okay, and this when, you'll notice it's not passing any parameters. Um, the mat tree is looking for something like this, so it'll pass the parameters to whatever function you give here. You don't actually need to provide um, node to has nested child, despite it taking node data as a parameter. Okay, and then inside of our mat nested tree node, we have a button, and right now that has an area label, but I don't really like using those, so I'm going to delete that. And again, this button is set to toggle the tree node when you click it. Um, so we'll have a look at that. <clears throat> so here, when we click this, it'll expand the element right there, and clicking again will collapse it. Okay, so that's this, um, and you can see that the uh, icon is conditionally set to either expand more or chevron right. So like right now it's chevron right, and now it's expand. Okay, so that's that. It just checks to see if it is expanded or not. And the way it does that is it reaches inside the nested tree control object, and it says, hey, is this expanded or not? And then we provide the node, which we would like to know about. Okay, and then finally, it just displays the file name. So in that case, that's folder. So it has the icon and then the folder. Okay, finally, below that, um, this is where the interesting nesting behavior happens. So this UL tag is basically creating another list um, using ng container and then marking that container with mat tree node outlet. So that's letting Angular Material know that child nodes for this node should go here. So it'll actually place 
um, other nodes of either this type or this mat tree node type, um, it'll place them here. Okay, and it's also applying an invisible class, which is in the CSS here, which just sets display to none. So it applies that invisible class if um, we are not expanded. Okay, and that works the same way as this call up here to is expanded. All right, so I know there's a lot going on. Hopefully that explains it a lot more. I'll just recap it real fast. Basically we have a tree node which configures its data source and its tree control. And then inside of the tree, you must provide uh, two node types. So the first node type is what happens if there is no children. Okay, and that just has the file name and the file type. And then the second type is what happens if there are children. And in this case, we have a button uh, which nicely toggles like so. And then the file name. And we know it doesn't have an extension, so we don't need to put it there. And then finally, an outlet uh, marked with mat tree node outlet um, for future nodes, like child nodes, to be displayed um, nested within the DOM. Okay, and our data is hard coded within our uh, app component, and that's just for simplicity. Um, but actually, if you look at their example, um, which is what makes it so complicated, is they actually parse out the tree data from this big string and then put it in a file database. So that's why their example is so confusing. Hopefully mine is less confusing than that. I just hard code them. Um, and I still use this lovely little file node object. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, just follow this example and you should be good to go. Uh, we're not going to really look at some of the more advanced options because it's already getting long enough, but you can definitely read about them here. And that should be pretty much all you need for your own building your own trees, you guys. Uh, let me know if you like this tutorial in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.